I've got uh, all right, it's a Thursday night, time for our Las Vegas Tri Club member spotlight. And tonight we have a new triathlete, almost brand new. And so this is going to be a lot of fun talking with Alexa Baldia. Hi, hi Alexa, how are you? Hi, John. Hi, Bob. I'm good. A Excellent. little bit scared, but I'm so excited to for this conversation. It's like... Awesome, I love it. Yeah, so are we. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun, and uh, this will be, we've already enjoyed talking with you before we push start here, and uh, and I hope it's going to be fun bringing some, some of that information out. So, but before we get going too far, I'm going to turn it over to Bob for the official introduction. All right. Thank you, John, and welcome again, Alexa. It's really wonderful to have you on here. And, and uh, every time I say Alexa, my, my, you know, Alexa comes on, <laughs> so we may have some troubles, but other than that, uh, John, John mentioned the fact that Alexa is a new triathlete, but she's quite, you know, she's been doing this for quite a while. She's, she's actually did her first triathlon 12 days ago. So, <laughs> so yeah, she is a brand new triathlete, started training with um, Astrid in, yeah. in uh, January. So that's wonderful. Welcome. And I'm just going to just start right off the, off the bat. Well, wait, there's a little bit more background. Alexa is from the Philippines, and she's here teaching autistic kids as an elementary school, which is a just a you know time-consuming and and a grueling job. So, you know, hats off to you for doing that, Alexa. But thank you so much for being here. And um, what, what what on earth made you want to get into triathlon? What is your why? Why do you do this? I blame everything uh, to my husband, Paul. <laughs> I was just supporting him when he decided to do his triathlon last first ever triathlon last October. And I was with him whenever he runs, I would try to run with him or walk if I'm too tired. It, whenever he bikes, I also bike with him. If he's going to do 15 miles, I'm going to do just 10 miles. If he's going to go swimming, I'll be right on the bench waiting for him. <laughs> uh, are, that is so <laughs> nice. Talk. Yeah, yeah. So I was his Sherpa and um, just supporting him all the way. But then when I witnessed him after, you know, getting into that finish line, I felt like, that's it. I think I can do that too. <laughs> I should have done it with you. And I was with you all the time in your, in your trainings. And I know how you, you know, I made his meals during before or after his race so i'm like i think i can do this i you know i just have to wrap myself around it you know manage my time knowing that my job is a bit you know is a bit hard and it's sucking my energy up every single day so um but i challenge myself if i'm not gonna do it now when can i do it because i know if i ever go back to the philippines i would be swimming in the ocean and I don't like what's underneath the ocean. I don't like the corals. I'm a, no matter how beautiful they are, but you know, it's it just scares me. So I don't. I would rather swim in the lake. So I challenge myself, and that's how I reach out to Paula's coach, Coach Astrid of Trifusion Endurance Sports. Um, shout out to Coach. Hi, Coach. If you're ever watching, <laughs> yeah, I'm so is. glad that I got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. I'm so glad that I did my first try and like what w one of my one of my um, Sherpas when I did my rage Miss uh, Kelly Godal, I think I got the try bug because when I was biking I was already thinking of the next event that I'm going to do I thought I was just going to you know I just want to get this done I don't want to do it again it's this is crazy it's not for me but when I was biking on my 10th mile I went I'm already thinking I think I'm going to do sand hollow this is not the end of it if I if you know I worked hard for this this is not going to be the end of it so and that 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 is wonderful and also also you you were a volunteer for these for our races before last year Yes, so, yeah, you've been involved for a while. That's, that's right. Yeah, and actually that made a big difference on making this decision because when I was watching your races, it's a friendly race. And I I also thought, oh my goodness, I thought it's, you know, like the grueling yeah. I, <laughs> uh, events, but it's so friendly. And I even witnessed a guy there 
he didn't he didn't know that he could change gears in his bike and I think Mr. John and I had to teach him and I'm like if someone you know can can do try without having you know having to know the right ways and riding a bike I think I can do it too because I've been <laughs> I've been running just not swimming I think that's that's the part that I'm scared the most mm -hmm. the swimming because I don't know how to swim Growing up in the Philippines, I just know how to snorkel and that's it. <laughs> don't know how to swim. So I think that's the part that I'm scared of, but I think I can do it, you know, if I just find the right people to teach me and would make me feel safe. And that's, that's wonderful that you get started like that, and especially in the Philippines. Now, a lot of people don't like swimming in the ocean, so you're not, you're not alone there. Um, are, there are there lakes and pools in the Philippines that uh, you can um lakes i think before i'm more scared of lakes because you don't see what's how deep is it is it you know you don't see any corals and you rarely see oh. fish and i think the lakes in the philippines i i have i don't think i have been to a lake in the philippines i just find it scary i just see ocean and you know how ocean waves are and i don't like the brainish corals that I see underneath. Oh. <laughs> I just like the fish that the corals. <laughs> and you know how it could go deep right away. I'm like, whoa, it's it was just mm -hmm. like 20 feet deep. Now it's like 100 feet deep. So I don't like that part. So <laughs> I'm scared of the ocean. I just snorkel with the well, vest on. Well, I, I gotta tell you when I'm sitting here listening to you talk about even doing your first race, I'm here, I'm seeing this real quiet confidence in you that you're, you're, you, you identify something you want to do and you're going to do it. And, you know, being a teacher of, of children with autism, I imagine that's, you know, probably a skill that you really have uh, developed over the years or, or have nurtured within your, your job is that you're, 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 you have this confidence about you. I can just see it. So I have no doubt that you will do a race in the ocean someday. Yeah, <laughs> Especially... I would give it a try. You know, I never really... I just snorkel and never swam in the ocean. But now that in being in the triathlon community, I, I think I learned that um, how can you say that you can't do it or you're too scared to do it if you didn't even try? Yep. So yep. when I get I love try it. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. Well, let's talk about your first uh, race, which was BBSC's Rage. A full 12 days ago. Are you, have you yeah. recovered? <laughs> yeah, I had a short recovery time because I had to Sherpa Paolo. <laughs> the <week> after, so <laughs> yeah, that's exhausting. After the race yeah. triathlon, I had to wrap around, you know, getting him into his race week because he had a week of, you know, nutrition that he had to yeah. follow and yeah. the taper week that he had to follow too. So I was with him almost all the time. So I had a short celebration for mine and then... <laughs> Is right away. Yeah. Well, is, isn't isn't he? Does he realize how lucky he is to have you sherpering for him yeah. and taking care of him? I also, I always tell him how lucky you are. <laughs> Very <Always>. good. <laughs> it's oh, an I eight point eight point five sherpa thing, so I think he's lucky enough for yeah. me to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sherpa stuff work. All right, so let's talk about your rage event at what point did you say i'm going to do it and that you started training how far before the race i started training with coach astrid la mid-january okay so it was winter time it's crazy you know yeah, but yeah. um i have i have to catch up on my swimming so i was not confident i did not know how to swim so i think that's that's how early I did my first ever training because I have to catch up on my swimming skills. Oh. And um, it was so hard because I'm a full-time teacher and, you know, getting these training plans, I know that I have to follow them wholeheartedly and religiously. I know it's not like, okay, do this, do this. Coach is not like that, but um, I know she wants me to finish strong and finish oh, smiling. Geez. I know why training plans are there. It's because I need to finish, you know, I would love to finish strong that way I would still keep doing it and not like, this is going to be my last. I don't like this. I'm, week for this but 
the training plans really made me, I think, finish strong and, you know, finish smiling. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did it January swimming and I had to stop mid-February because of um, a travel that we did. And then right after that, I the, getting closer to the race date, I have to wrap my head around it because, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm three weeks away. And, you know, I have to do my first open water swim and I'm still so scared. Even when I was swimming in the pool training, I was already thinking of the lake and I panic and like, it's, you know, I lose a lot of breath while I'm in the pool I'm like I I'm thinking of I'm gonna sink I'm gonna see dead bodies I'm gonna see <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's crazy I I don't know what to expect in the lake but I'm already overthinking which is not nice I was not supposed to do that and coach was there to make me feel safe you know you're um even when we're on the lake I'm gonna be beside you so oh. you don't have to worry about that um and then running I always love running I don't like running in treadmill that I train started training on the winter time so I couldn't run outside so I have to do it on a treadmill which I didn't like but eventually I learned to like it because it was just too cold outside and you know the pacing I like that you know it's consistent because when I run outside it's just like okay I'm running fast I'm running slow it's different when you're in a treadmill and biking I was on a trainer for the first time so Paolo through the community he got he scored I think it was Kate Olsen's oh yeah 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 he bought yeah. that one for oh, a good, good. <laughs> for a good deal so we were on a trainer since January and um I don't know I don't even know how to use the the cleats mm. I just regular sh the running shoes that I have whenever yep like outside but on a trainer is different I have to use it so it was it was nice I feel like I'm a pro no, that's <laughs> cool. I, I love what you said about you, you said several things that, that show that you have a lot more wisdom yep. than than you should at your young age for and for having started this you know you, you, brought up, <laughs> you brought up the fact that you knew you had to train and be prepared for this so that yep. you could finish strong and you didn't want to just struggle through it and I mean that that's that shows a lot of uh, forethought and a lot of wisdom yeah. too. So congratulations yeah. on that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to look at the side of it. I'm like because many times, countless times, I would question myself, why am I even doing this? I could just you know, I could just have my weekend back and you know just watch Netflix. But now I'm watching Netflix on a trainer, so <laughs> it's quite productive more productive than I used to be so but I just can't believe that no matter how busy I am I found time to do it and I'm still finding time to do it um right now even you know with all the craziness of my life my schedule um I think triathlon really made me manage my time really really well this time because Mm -hmm. I just won't find any more excuses if mm -hmm. I do this I do that Paolo and I would you know we'd would talk to each other Friday night okay how is our Saturday gonna look like we do this we do that and then do this yeah. and then okay we're just gonna do laundry on Sunday because <laughs> we do this and do that and do that so it's it's a lot it's a lot of commitment but it's one of the best decisions that we ever made yeah. You know, we are, you know, we're, we're talking about um, you being a brand new triathlete, but you're already, you've, you've, you've shared so much wisdom for a lot of people who are, you know, hopefully are watching the new folks, the things that you say about, you know, you, you're going to get ready, you're going to plan ahead, yeah. you know, plan your week out, you're going to figure out what it is you're going to do. And, and for everybody who's listening that don't know, but um, Alexa has uh, several businesses that she she makes cakes, professional baker, and she also has a a business where she's helping her friends out in the Philippines. You know, he's selling things. So it's like you you're a full time teacher, a baker, an entrepreneur, and <laughs> and a wife to Paulo, and, and so you're carrying you know, that, carrying that along. But you know that's that's wonderful. And you also mentioned the word consistent. 
you know, you know, you have to do this. You have to keep it up or else it's. It's, it's surprisingly my relationship with Paulo is still okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was stronger because of triathlon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and our coach told us that the couple who try together stays together. So I think, yeah, just, just this afternoon we were swimming, we were sharing the lane at the pool at Desert Breeze. And I think it's so fun. It's so cool to think that, hey, I'm training with my husband side mm -hmm. by side. It's not like we're racing each other, but right. we're just training each other. He's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. And, you know, it's fun. It's for the past four or five months, this is this has been our formal date. Like, oh, isn't family. that cool? Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're part of a team, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fun. So fun doing it. Oh, I love it. And and I think Bob's spot on. You're you're picking up a lot of neat pieces of, of information uh, pretty early. And I love how you talked about even, you know, being hesitant about the swim because you're not alone. And it's great for people to hear that because you did overcome that. And and same thing with even, you know, training and saying, why am I doing this? Uh, again, that that you're not alone in, in having those thoughts. So it's sort of neat to to hear you talk through that. So tell us about the rage event when you finally got there and you you trained really since January. So you had a good period of training for that. What was that experience like? What was it like standing on the start line ready to go? Yeah, were you nervous? I Paula told me, okay, get in the water now because you're you're it's almost your start time. Mm -hmm. And you know, just you know, put put in some water in your wetsuit the warm water and you know um you know just get the nervousness out but i told you know what i told him i just look at him like i'm not even nervous i'm not scared surprisingly i thought my heart's gonna be beating so fast that i could hear it but it wasn't i was just you know i got this i'm excited to finish this in 2.5 hours i think i can do it i prepared for this and my coach is there, Kelly was there, Paolo is there, my friends were there. So I'm like, I'm just excited more than I was scared. Anxious. Yes, That's you were excited, but not anxious. Surprisingly, yeah. surprisingly because um, whenever I go to any events like interviews or um, competition or run, I used to be a runner before, just running marathons and half marathons. My heart would be pounding so fast, but it's it was different when I was at the lake already waiting for my start time. I was not scared at all. I was just, you know, so excited to get this done because I know I can do it. I prepared for it. But um, I mean, I've been in the lake, I think twice or thrice before the event. And it's I, I just thought that it's just another practice day. It's mm -hmm. you're just going to do it. You, we're just going to do all three at once. Now, Do you attribute that to your preparation? The fact that you actually put in a lot of time to prepare well? Um, yeah, I honestly, I was not the most, you know, diligent kind of. I don't know. I beg to differ uh, with you on that. <laughs> no, I still like, oh, I miss bike today. Okay, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I miss run today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm like, I'm not saying I'm the most diligent one. Um, between Paula and I, I think he's, he's better. But um, I think I've had my fair share on the training plans that, um, that was prepared for me. Um, I also give credit to my coach she's really awesome she's yep. she's like okay listen to your body if you can't do it but she also pushes me she makes me feel safe she doesn't baby me but mm. she doesn't make me feel she makes me feel safe but challenged at the same time so she's like okay swim swim through swim through you can do this one boy at a time i was i was at the, at my first open water swim was better than my second swim because I was closer to the race event now so I was overthinking in the lake I was so scared but I couldn't believe it I was after 400 yards I was this close to just telling her I can't do this I think I'm gonna quit the rate the you know the race I don't think I can you know I can keep swimming I told myself that but coach was like 
what's in your head? What are you thinking? And she told me, you know, you should, you should tell yourself that you're lucky. You have a very, um, very beautiful lake to swim. You have these people around you. You have, you know, beautiful weather and you have a very strong body to use to, to race. And then he, she taught me that I should have a safe word and my safe word was Paolo. So every time you swim, just keep saying Paolo, 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 get yeah. to Paolo. And Paolo was busy swimming his, you know, distance too, preparing yeah. for the Ironman. So I'm like, okay. So, you know, her words and just the way she was coaching me really helped me a lot as an athlete because I, she's always so positive. So that radiates in the athletes that she handles. So, well, I, I, I love I, hearing this. And again, <laughs> yeah, this, this is so great because one, when you said you weren't nervous at the start of the race, that's that confidence that I, I see in you and that you have, and that's wonderful. But every now and then we doubt each other or doubt, doubt ourselves. And it's great to have your help someone near you, like a coach, like, like Astrid, who, who helps remind you that you're, you can do this. And so that's really, you know, triathlon's an individual sport, but we never do it alone. And it's nice to have people around you like that. And that's yeah. something that you, something you brought up there, Alexa, that is wonderful is the fact that you realize you're part of a community and everybody's pulling for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you're not doing it yourself. As John mentioned, he said, it, he said it very well, you know, it's like, we, uh, we do it alone, but we're, we we do not do it by ourselves, you know, you, you, or vice versa, you do it by yourself, but you don't do it alone. There's everybody is involved in helping you. And you're, you're, yeah. you're, a, you're a good so, example of that. So Paula and I are lucky to be in a very beautiful tri community. Yeah. And um, especially um, TFS and you guys, and um, you're so acknowledging. And um, one thing that I was so thankful about during my rage to, and during my training was just people just coming together to lend me things. I didn't have to buy a lot of things. I That's mean, good. my website was borrowed. My tri kit was borrowed. Mm -hmm. My bike was borrowed. So I was like, you, you don't even have to spend a lot of money to yeah. join. And we were so blessed to be surrounded by people who just, I, we didn't even have to ask them, you know, they just asked and they just ask us, do you have a bike? Do you have a wetsuit? Do you have this and that? So you know, people just coming together and, That's you know, perfect. volunteering to be there, to be your Sherpa, to be there, to cheer for you, to be there, to be your photographer, your videographer. That's it's perfect. just crazy. You know, it's, wow. it's just so amazing to know that there are people out there for wow. you, even if you're alone in this, you know, doing the race, but yeah. there's people around you who's waiting, supporting. <laughs> Oh, that's great. And you do draw a lot of energy from that as well. And I love that. All right. So now you do the swim and you get that behind you and you get out and, and now we're back to rage. Um, you jump on the bike and what was the bike ride like? I almost didn't do rage because a week before, was it two, two weeks before the, the event, I had a, my first bike outside. I was on a trainer mm -hmm. for once. Now it's time for me to go bike outside just two miles in the the path to red rock i had a, a horrible accident i lost my two veneers oh. because I, yeah I, yeah i was just using my regular running shoes i slid i was pedaling i think i was pedaling too hard like like how i pedaled on a trainer i slipped my my left foot on uh, between the spokes, mm. the front spokes. So my bike had a full stop and I threw myself, you know, in front and landed on my chin and I lost my two veneers. So oh. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't think I can ever bike. And again, I was just scared. So, but two days after I had it fixed and that, uh, and we were supposed to just do relay with Paolo. Paolo's going to do the bike. But I told Paolo, you know what? Just give me another chance to bike the route, the thir the 12 mile route. I'm going to, and then after the, you know, after we practice, that's when I'm going to decide whether I'm going to do all three or we're going to do relay. Mm -hmm. 
no. because I biked a lot. I used to live in Oceanside when I was doing a uh, distance learning. So I lived there for a year. I was biking almost every day. So I tried to think of that, those moments that I'm like, I know how to bike. I'm like, I can't, I can't just pass this on to Paolo when, you know, I, I thinking about the workouts on Zwift, it's, even if it's on a trainer, it's hard. It's hard. I, I don't like the bike workouts. It's hard. It's, it's one of the, it's, I love swimming more than bike now. So <laughs> I don't like bike training. So um, it was hard. So I think about, you know, the time and the effort that I invested on training on a bike. And now I'm just going to pass it on to Paolo. At first, I really cried making that decision. If I'm going to give it to Paolo, I don't think I'd like it. And like I trained for months and now I'm going to give it to somebody else. I don't like it. I think I can still do it. So after I practiced the route, the bike route, that's when I knew, okay, I can do this. I'm I just going to, I can slow, slow it down, you know, just, you know, keeping my teeth together, <laughs> <laughs> Keep my teeth intact. You know, I'm not going to be racing very fast. I'm just going to bike and enjoy the view mm -hmm. like I always do. And then I'm just going to catch up on my run. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I did it. So I'm so happy that, you know, I did made that decision. I was scared. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what's another tooth to lose if, you know, I, I fall. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the other word that's coming to mind here besides confidence is determination. Mm -hmm. And I love this when you, you seem to set your mind on something, you're going to do it. And, and that combination of confidence and determination is, is really, really fantastic. All right, so now you, 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 you did the bike after that, which is amazing. You did the run. What was it like hitting that finish line? Uh, the run part, I thought I was, the run part was going to be my strongest because I'm the runner. But Paolo told me, you know, it's going to be different because you just did the swim and the bike. So you're not as strong as, you know, you think you could be when you used to be a runner and just run. It's different now because you're dehydrated, you know, you're tired and you just want to get legs hurt and it's hot. Yeah. I don't know. Back in the Philippines, when we run the marathons, we do it 12 midnight that um, we yeah <laughs> 12 midnight or 1 a.m that we we're not under the sun so even if i grew up in a tropical country running under the heat is uh, not used to it so uh, it was it was difficult it was already i was already hitting but um and for the first time my heat my knees were hurting i told i told paulo this is the first time that i felt i ran a marathon before but my knees were not hurting this much. I, mm. but, and then I forgot to, and then we realized I forgot to drink one of my, uh, to eat one of my e-gels. So wow. I think I, that, that was it. I was low on nutrition there, but I finished and I saw my coach there like, run, do not stop. He, she was yelling that, go, go, you're almost there. I was on the downhill. So I'm like okay the last the last few seconds of this race so i'm just gonna do it i don't like downhills it, yeah. it hurts my back yeah. so <laughs> yeah it's crazy i like flats so um but i did it i was so happy you know hearing my name i feel like i was an iron man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big accomplishment even if it yeah. wasn't <laughs> your first one and so I did it. It's so nice to have that bling for the yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. Well, all the things you overcame from the swimming challenges to the bike crash. I mean, that that is really amazing. And that really makes for a great first race story is that you had to overcome all that and you did it. And, mm -hmm. and so cool. Yeah. So I have one, one question for you. Now that you are an experienced triathlete, We've got a lot of new people. What what advice would you give them to help them get to your level? Uh, I mean, you actually are. You've achieved quite a bit. Um, I think one of the greatest. I have so many lessons learned in triathlon, <laughs> not just you know the time management and all that, but I think you have to 
get comfortable with being uncomfortable mm -hmm. because during my training i would just like do um if the training plan says i'm gonna do 200 200 yards of swim through you know i would just cheat and just do 100 at a time rest and then another 100 but i don't think that's it it doesn't make you know it's there for a reason. I have to really swim through 200 because it's going to be 700 on the race. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not comfortable with, you know, long, uh, long bikes. I don't like Zwift training. It hurts, really hurts my legs. I don't like it. So a lot of times I would just do halfway through the bike training and just stop because I can, <laughs> yeah. right? so no one's watching. So, <laughs> but it's then, but if you put in, if you finish it, finish what your is on your training plan, it's gonna, it's gonna make a lot of difference when you go to the race, you, you are strong, you feel happy, you feel confident. So I think, you know, just be comfortable with, being uncomfortable mm. and um you should confront you should confront pain you should confront fear and discomfort head on mm -hmm. on, on the other hand just so that you, that doesn't get taken to extreme you can you can look to see if there are issues on your bike if the seat's too low or you know, <laughs> experiment or not experiment but explore your bike fit or something like that there is a reason for that pain so you can look mm -hmm. into that as well yeah also one of the lessons that i learned was is that um never tell yourself that you can't so mm. don't do your own inner belief. very good yeah. <laughs> yeah so because that's a wonderful lot of thinking, no matter how strong you are when you go swimming at the lake or in the ocean when your head's not right and overthinking of the negative things then your body's not going to work as mm -hmm. you know mm. how I train it to be. So, like I said, my first open water swim was better than my second when it should be the other way around. Because on the second open water swim that I did, I was already overthinking because I just had a yeah. bike crash. Yeah. You know, the race is almost, you know, coming. And yeah. I don't think I trained, you know, enough for swimming. I, I don't think I can do... 700 yards straight in 30 35 minutes so um my actually my enemy was just myself so never that's another great lesson is the language you use on yourself and the way you talk to yourself you're yes. you're, you're much wiser than your age <laughs> no i talk to a lot of people like you guys so i get a lot of lessons especially my coach so that's she great it radiates on me. And of course, enjoy the process. Like my, my always tells me, you know, okay, smile and swim or smile and run or smile and bike. Always smile. That wow. that explains why a lot I have a lot of smiles in the cameras, <laughs> in the photos that I'm at. <laughs> that is that. Always I'm smile. Like Alexa, this has just been fantastic. And I've taken down several notes here. I love the confidence. I love the determination. I love this, the, the thinking, never tell yourself you can't. And be comfortable without, with, uh, with being uncomfortable and enjoying the process. This is lots of wonderful gems in this talk. And yes, there are. it's just so good to catch up with you and hear more about that. So thank you for joining us and, and sharing your story. Yeah, it's been it's actually been delightful and, and educational as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for yep. this wonderful opportunity. <laughs> oh, thanks for you. Thank you for being on. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, thank you who is logged in and watching. Th have a good night. Good night, everybody. Bye.